Hi guys, today we will talk about the zero crossing detector circuit. The first will be with the, the photocoupler and the second will be with the uh, without the photocoupler but with, the, with the transistor. So let's suppose that we have uh, the classic grid voltage. So we have a design of uh, um, 220 volt, 220 volts LMS and 50, frequency, 50 hertz as a frequency. Then you put the, the classic grass bridge. I will just draw it like this. And uh, and then you want to use the photo the, the, the you want to use the the photocoupler because you want to so you have the same voltage here, the rectified voltage here, and you want as an output when the circuit when the input voltage arrives to zero. So something so something like that. Uh, but before going on, I have to explain a bit how the photocoupler works. So first of all, here there is a, um, a just a bit of, of, of explanation for your curiosity. This is taken from the um, Toshiba application note. So let's analyze this application out a little bit. As you can see here, there is a, um, there is the circuit of the photocoupler. This is the first version, and this is the other version for the high speed, because basically it has the uh, the shot key the, the, the shot key here as an uh, the acceleration diode. Now, what you want to to see in the uh, in a in, in a photocoupler is basically well, first of all, the package because this has to be in the in respect with your project, then you want to see the CTR, which is the current transfer ratio, and this it, it is defined as you can as you can see here. The current transfer ratio is defined as the ratio of the collector current from the output transistor to the forward current IF applied to the input LED. Uh, so the ratio between IC over IF, and it is expressed as a per uh, as a percentage. Then you want also to see the the, the maximum isolation that this uh, photocopper provides, and then of course the temperature range if you need it in, in your pro in your project. Now what you want to do with the photocopper is also to transmit signal, which they can also be at high speed. So what you want also to see in the is the propagation delay time. So these are the main characteristics that you want to see in a photocoupler. Then you have to follow this application notes more in detail if you really want to design a full circuit with the the with the photocoupler. Just a, a little bit of curiosity: if you wanted to, if you if you wanted to connect the, the the photocoupler properly, you will need at least two resistors called RIN and the pull-up RL. And if you connect the some integrated circuit here or there you will need to look also at the minimum current which can take as an output so the IOL and the IL so you know that the, whenever you connect to integrated circuits or together you have, al yeah, you have always to look at the IOL, IL, BOL, BOH you know the story, the, compa the compatibility between uh, logic gates so you know the story as you can see as you can see, an example of design specification, there is the data transmission rate, 5 kilobits at seconds. And yes, of course, the supply voltage, the operating life, uh, and etc, etc, etc. These is, uh, are the main specification which you can find actually in a data, in a data sheet. So let's see this uh, a little bit. So you have the input forward voltage in the test condition because yes, of course, there is uh, it is a system composed by diode and you expect to have a forward voltage in uh, during the a certain a certain test condition i forward current and as you can see you can find the current transfer ratio as i said before expressed is in in a percentage so the current transfer ratio is uh, basically is basically how much current is flowing in in this side when you apply for instance 10 milliampere here what is the current flowing to the other side? Well, basically, 
you can use this equation here and get the and get the the other current the, the, you can get the collector you can get the the collector current if you know the forward current very simple now before if you wanted to use the application if you wanted to use, sorry if you wanted to use the photocatalyst in this application we need to design our in and the pull up here rl so let's let's see how we can do that by simply looking at this equation so the first equation you know that the i forward is given by this equation y is, is given by this equation well basically just using the ohm law and uh, i will do it for you this is the vcc then you have the diode put it put it right there and uh, and you're gonna have also the voltage drop here of the vol so let's do the um so let's do the the equation the kirchhoff equation m1 so you have a vcc the current is flow the current if is flowing here this will cause a drop voltage here vcc minus uh, minus vf which is the typical now you proceed with the one well, now you proceed with the with everything and you have minus vol so if you if you divide by the resistance r that you're going to put here you are going to have basically the i forward current because v is equal to r times i and so you can even you can directly know this uh, you can directly know this uh, this forward this uh, this resistor here as you can see from the data sheet uh, r in is uh, is in a value between uh, is an reasonable value of 1 kilo ohm, 50, 50 ohm, 200 ohm, so you can expect a value like that. Then let's see uh, how you can design RL. RL, remember that uh, it is the res this resistor here, and RL is basically the pull up. Well, this is a, a very complex equation. Uh, you can uh, basically skip all of this because this is really useless, in my opinion. It is just a pull up, so you can basically skip this. Don't don't even read that. It is a pull up, so you can expect uh, yes, 4.7 kilo kilo ohm. You can uh, yes, you can have a margin if you if you want, but uh, it's a pull up resistor, so you can directly put a pull up based on your experience and change it uh, based on. Uh, uh, but if you wanted to do a precise design, just look at this equation here and uh, you can have an idea of the minimum pull-up. But pull-up can be also to 10 kilo ohm. Uh, 1 kilo ohm pull-up is very, very, very strong. So uh, 4.7 kilo ohm is uh, my experience minimum pull-up. And if you wanted to, to put, uh, so this is the strong pull-up. 10 kilo ohm is uh, mid, and uh, if you wanted to put uh, 100 kilo ohm, this is a very weak pull up. What is the difference between a strong and weak pull up? Basically, the speed. So, the strong pull up this dissipate, the dissipation is increased, but also the speed is increased because you're, you are reducing. Uh, Basically, the, uh, all the dynamics is proportional to RC. So the, the lower the resistor, the, the faster it is. This instead, the weak pull-up instead, will dissipate, uh, dissipate less, but also has a less speed. So it depends on your application. So now let's go back on the NT spice and let's put everything together. So let's open LT Spice and let's use the first, let's use the voltage. As, as we know, this is the always grid side. Actually, I don't care what it is. So let's put just 220 volt, 50 hertz. Now let's put the classical Graltz bridge. Uh, do, I, do I have the already done classical uh, classical bridge with auto generated uh, let me see let me see let me see let me see 
because uh, I have made so um, I have made this uh, uh, really thousand 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 times so I would expect that uh, there should be no there isn't okay anyway uh, let's put the grass bridge um, let's put uh, so the, the ideal diode honestly I don't care So now you can expect the so now ju 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 let's just run this is ridiculous but uh, <laughs> let's run the simulation and we, okay so we expect that uh, so this is this is working properly now let's now let's uh, use uh, the photocoupler I will put uh, um, you have to to do you have to go into optos and you can choose a, va a variety of uh, optocouplers and uh, let's choose the 4n25. This is our opt isolator. Okay. Now let's put uh, here the path to ground and let's put uh, let's put uh, one kilo. Uh, wow wow, I don't have the data sheet. This is very good, yes indeed. So let's put one kilo just for to be safe. Uh, this is the output voltage. It is the output voltage, and as we saw here, you need the VCC. You need the VCC, and so let's give a VCC. <laughs> of 10 volts. 4.7 kilom 4.7 kilom as oh 4.7 kilom okay we can do it so how does this circuit work the rectifier receives the input ac so let me now let me uh, let me take this picture and uh, let me put on a spice because we have to understand how this circuit is working. So let's sub substitute, sub substitute this to this and let's see how it is working even before pressing the run. So here you have the sinusoidal and here at the output you expect uh, this wave from here. Okay? So the positive half waves, uh, as long as they are higher than 10 volts, so if this voltage here is higher than the volts they will push current they are going to push current through the phototransistor and when the positive of waves so now if the voltage is below 10 volts the phototransistor shuts down and the output goes to zero. So, when V is greater than 10 volt, on. It's less than, and when it's less than 10 volt, off. Now, since you have uh, the, um, the pull up here, when you have the, this is, works uh, as uh, basically a not gate. And so for this reason, you're gonna have uh, zero when v is greater than 10 volts and you're gonna have 10 volts when uh, v is less than 10 volts because basically this this works as a not gate so let's uh, let's run the simulation and see if we are right um, i need more
we are feeding a lot of current inside it and the output voltage as you can see goes exactly to 10 volts when the input is to zero now let me now uh, because this works as an because this works as a uh, not gate if i put 5 volts instead you're basically diminishing the threshold and as you can see when it is less than 5 volts you have the the threshold set sorry i have to multiply every, everything by 10 or by 100 because uh, no, not by 100 but by 50 and this also by 50 because i can't see nothing okay now i see it do you see it now you should okay now you see it so you see that when there is the threshold, he is, he is starting to, so that the output is starting to, um, is basically start is basically starting to wrap up, and uh, this is as we intended. Now there is a, of course a minimum voltage in which I can put because otherwise it won't work. So I can put two volts. I can put uh, not not less than one volt. I think because otherwise the photocoupler won't work. Ah, it's still working. Wow. But I have to put at least one volt. So this is this will be one volt detector, which is still fine and this is still good. And so whenever now you can construct the logic by putting a, you can construct the logic now by putting a, a comparator, because you see that this is not not properly a good square waveform. So you should need a comparator. You should need here uh, the output. Uh, a sort of comparator, hysteresis comparator, Schmidt trigger, whatever you need, a buffer, because at the input you have, you have uh, something like this, but you want a clean square wave. So let me put uh, a, so let me put uh, a logic gate, let's go to digital, and let's, uh, uh, no, sorry, I would like to have uh, the SN74 yes this should be good the SN74 this should be a uh, not should be a OR gate uh, I think I don't remember if this is a OR or an END no honestly I, I don't I don't remember I, I honestly I don't remember uh, yeah, I have to try. The only thing I can do is to try. What I do remember is that A is the first input, B is the second input, VCC is the power supply, A and D is the ground, Y is the output, and B is the other input. Now I don't remember if this is our on end, so if it is, if it is, it, it, what do we should do. Is to use the theorem uh, x and one is equal to x uh, x or um, or zero is equal to x. If I, I remember correctly, this was something like it. so. You wanted to have exactly the same waveform, so you want you want to have a signal logic gate and the same signal here but uh, instead of having something like this you should have something like this so I go, I'm, I'm gonna try I'm gonna try oh could not open but uh, 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 so anyway let's use uh, let's use an, an, uh, this is very embarrassing from my side library never works and i don't know why 
So let me use a logic gate instead. Uh, oh yes, even a buffer. You can use even a buffer. Um, yes, let's put a buffer and let's close it like that. What's it going on? It's not working, I don't know why. Maybe because I'm feeding too much current. Did, did, what? Sorry, uh, the, the value disappeared for no reason. The, the value disappeared for no reason. Oh, exactly what I wanted. So, this is just behavioral, but uh, I, I don't care. So you see that you have, uh, at the input you have uh, uh, something, uh, you, at the input you have, uh, let me call this, uh, this out. Okay, so now the stage is complete. Because as you can see, let me multiply this uh, by uh, by 10. Oh, now you see it. Exactly what I was looking for. So, as you can see, at the input now, you have a clean, at the output, sorry, you have a very clean square waveform. So, for this reason, I wanted to put the, the logic gate. So, let me let me process everything by, uh, by the beginning. Uh, let me put this here. So you have the grid voltage at the input. Now you have the rectification. After the rectification, you have the zero crossing detector. Let me multiply by 50. You have the zero crossing detector. And after the zero crossing detector, you have the very clean rectification. So what does the micro? So what does your microcontroller receive? Is, is just a very clean square waveform. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, the circuit is done. Thank you very much for following me until this, until this point. And uh, I will, and uh, I will be open for question in the comment. And uh, thank thank you guys, and see you in the next video.